Hey guys, how's it going? Laura with Garden Answer. Today we're talking about lavender. I want to share what I've gathered to be the top seven most popular varieties, those that I think you will be most likely to run across at your garden center when you're shopping. Um, also, I want to share some details, uh, just basics about lavender and what types are out there and what might do best in your garden. I am gearing this a little bit more toward those of you who are just getting started with your garden possibly, or maybe you just haven't tried lavender before and you want to give it a shot. I mean, we've all seen the pictures of gorgeous hedges of lavender or fields of lavender. I mean, who wouldn't want that in their yard? Or maybe you just love the scent. You love using lavender scented products and you want to be able to cut some of the blooms and stems, bring them inside, enjoy that fragrance, or just enjoy the bloom color and fragrance out in your own garden. So I hope by sharing some of these details, it will help kind of guide you to choosing the right variety for your space so that you don't spend money on one that may not work for you. A couple of things about lavender before we talk about the seven varieties. First, lavender as a whole is an amazing plant. Um, in my garden, they're one of the most low maintenance, more productive flowers that I have. The types we plant here are perennials, so I'll talk about types here in a second. Um, they come back beautifully every single year. Some varieties will bloom upwards of three different times in a season, and even if you don't go in and shear them back or deadhead them between bloom cycles, they still look pretty because lavender is a beautiful dried flower as well. They like full sun, so six to eight hours minimum. All day sun, even better. They like it hot. They like it dry. First year plantings, you do have to supplement with a little extra water as you do most everything else, but following years, they're a very low water usage plant, which is amazing. I think that uh, we should all be adding more of those types of things to our gardens. They can handle really crummy soil as long as it's well draining. That's the only thing they ask of you is to put them in a spot where water is not going to collect and stay around their roots. Um, so if you have heavy, boggy clay soil, they're probably not going to thrive as well as they would in a, a more rocky, well draining, uh, maybe even sandier soil. They also are very tolerant of high pH pH, which is something we deal with here in Eastern Oregon. Um, so they, they just perform really well for us here. They are deer and rabbit resistant, which is not something that I deal with here in my garden, but I know a lot of you guys do. So if that's something, if you have deer pressure, rabbit pressure, lavender is a really good option. They can also take radiant heat off of buildings. Um, you can plant them near sidewalks where they're just kind of getting baked. That's where they thrive. And of course their fragrance, which I think is one of maybe the bigger reasons why a lot of us plant them in our garden. We want to smell that scent perfuming the air. We want to be able to cut bundles of them and bring them inside. Lavender from our own garden that's then perfuming our closets and drawers, they hold up beautifully as a dried flower too. So I could just keep going on probably with a list of all the positive reasons why you should add lavender to your garden. There are four basic groups of lavender that you may encounter, each one of them offering something a little bit different. Some are more hardy than others. Some have a higher scent. So the four basic groups are English, which we will put the botanical name on the screen. There is lavender, or also called a hybrid lavender. There's Spanish and there's French. So English lavender or Lavendula angustifolia, I think is one of the more popular out of the four groups. It's not native to England. They're all native to the Mediterranean sort of area, um, but they call it English just to distinguish it from the other groups. But they're very, uh, it's a very wide group, very wide range of colors from pink to white to blue to purples, a lot of different sizes. So you can get them very compact all the way up to these just great big giant plants but I think the, the best part about English uh, lavender, other than the fact that it's hardy enough to survive in my zone, is that it's got the sweetest, softest smell. Um, I, f I feel like it's the most pleasant smell of all the groups. They do hold their scent really beautifully even after they've been cut and they produce a really high quality oil. If that's something that you are growing your lavender for that might be of interest to you. Uh, they don't produce as much as uh, one of the other groups, but it's a very wonderful smell. The next group you may find is referred to by several different names, which can make it a little confusing. So you might see the word lavender or hybrid lavender or lavendula ex intermedia. It's a mix. It's a hybrid lavender, a mix between an English lavender and a spike lavender. And they've been bred for really high high quality oil and really high oil content, sometimes producing upwards of like 10 times more oil than some of your English varieties. The scent is a little different though. So when you take those two parent plants, you've got the English lavender that's got the really sweet, pleasing smell. And then you've got the spike lavender, which has a very strong pungent, like 
almost like a camphor or a, like a pine quality to it. Um, you kind of get those notes, both of those notes in the smell, but it has a very much so more intense smell than your English lavenders. But it's used a lot in the industry to use products and things like that because it's so high yielding, but they're also uh, hardy. They're hardy down to a zone five, so they're really good for northern climates, just like your English, English lavenders. In fact, a few of the examples I have here today are hybrid lavender. You'll also notice with hybrid lavender, the stems are thicker, coarser, they're much taller than English varieties. It makes them really nice to cut for bundling. Um, like if you're making, well, bundles to take inside or wreaths or things like that decorative, it's much easier to cut them. They're not as varied in terms of color. You won't find lots of varieties um, outside of just the purple family. They're mostly just purple and violet color. They also cannot be grown from seed. They're all grown from cuttings. So if you're wanting to start your lavender from seed, you'll probably find those in the English category. And then there's French lavender or Lavendula dentata, also referred to as fringed lavender. This one is grown mostly for its leaf structure. The blooms aren't quite as significant as in other categories, um, but the leaves are really unique. I don't see these very often. In fact, you'll see the word French in a lot of different lavenders that aren't actually French lavenders. Um, and the French, varieties are typically not as hardy. They're usually a little more tender like zones eight through 10. They're also not as highly scented, but they do look beautiful in containers grown kind of as just an annual. Well, for us in our area anyway. And last there's Spanish lavender or Lavendula stocus. This is one in our area we typically grow as an annual, even though technically I think they can handle a zone six, which is what we are, zone six through seven. But the wonderful thing about Spanish lavender are couple of things. One, if you live in the south, they can handle the heat a lot better than a lot of varieties. Like they can hand the in handle the intensity of heat. Um, they also have the most beautiful blooms. I mean, they have kind of like the bloom panicle and then they have this tuft or like these wings at the top of their blooms that come out. Um, they also are available in lots of different colors. They bloom all throughout the season, just like constantly throwing out new blooms. So a lot of times we see them grown as tree form and they're available to us kind of to grow as annuals in our area. Okay, so I hope that that was helpful and not more confusing, but I feel like when I was very first learning about lavender, um, it was really helpful for me to be able to categorize things and figure out which ones will actually survive in my area. So the seven that I'm gonna share with you today are actually all varieties of English or hybrid lavender. They're all ones that are perennial. In a lower zone. So for this list of seven varieties, how we came up with it is one, I kind of pay attention when we go to garden centers, I pay attention to what varieties they have to offer. Also, when I worked down at my parents' garden center full time, I really watched what varieties we ordered, what sold the best, what did the best in our area. I've grown a lot of them myself. Uh, we also talked to a few businesses. So Walter's Gardens out of Michigan, they are the Proven Winners Perennial Division. So they breed and produce these beautiful uh, perennials for Proven Winners, but they also grow a lot of other different varieties of lavender. We talked with Monrovia, who's a huge national grower. And then also we visited a lavender farm here in our local area called Buds, Blossoms and Bouquets. My mom and I did just a couple of years ago now, and we harvested a bunch of lavender to make wreaths and she grows 30 different varieties. So I got her take on um, some of the different ones available. The first couple on my list are actually the ones I have the very most experience with growing. Uh, number one is an English lavender called Sweet Romance. I have one right here next to me. The thing I love so much about this lavender variety, we have it planted in several locations, is that it stays compact. So 12 to 18 inches tall and wide um, is how big it gets and it blooms throughout the whole season. So you'll notice on this plant, this is kind of right now, kind of toward the end of July, is right when its first flush of blooms is starting to fade and it's getting ready to push a second set. And you can see if you looked really close that there are some from its first flush here and there are some from its second flush right here. Um, and of course, when they're in containers, they act a little bit different as well. But the color on this one is so intense. I love the fact that even below the petal, the calyx, the little thing that holds the petals on, it maintains a really dark color. So when you cut this to dry them, they maintain a really nice color. Some of the lighter varieties just kind of almost turn to nothing because they don't maintain enough of the color to, to show up. This one, and I think all the varieties I'm gonna talk about today are a zone five through nine, so I probably won't repeat that for every single one, but this one just has the most amazing landscape performance. It's just like blooms from edge to edge. They just create this mound and you'll just see just this halo, this beautiful mound of blooms on the entire plant and they attract so many pollinators 
so many. The other thing about this variety, as opposed to really all the other ones that I'm gonna mention, is that it does bloom earlier, just a little bit earlier than the rest of the varieties. The next one does not have any blooms on it, but we will find pictures. <laughs> so this one is an English lavender called Munstead. Oh, it's just got the most gorgeous smell. Mm, I just love it so much. This one also stays fairly compact, 12 to 18 inches tall and wide. Uh, the thing I noticed in the difference between these two, I've grown hedges of both of these. This one is a little bit more sparse in its bloom. This one bloom production is higher and the bloom panicles on this one are a little bit, they're longer, but they are a little bit lighter in color. So more, more of like a rosy lavender color. But this one, which surprised me, was fairly good in a part shade area. When I first planted my drift of these in front of a maple tree in our old garden, it was full sun because the maple tree was little and they did wonderfully. But as that maple tree grew, it started to shade part of the hedge. And I found that these still thrive. They still, they weren't like, you know, as, as productive as they could have been, but they still threw out blooms and they still like maintained that hedge look that I wanted in that area. So I found this one to be fairly versatile in that way and I like that. Number three is Hid Coat, which is a very popular variety. I've grown this one um, in my old garden. This is also a favorite of our local lavender grower. Uh, she said that this in her field is one of the best performers uh, that she has. The thing that she really loves about it is that it produces longer stems than a lot of your other English lavenders. So if you can have that long stem quality of a hybrid lavender, but get the scent of just an English lavender, that's amazing. So they grow about three by three and they've got a really beautiful kind of a light lavender color. They're just, uh, they're a wonderful variety. I'm excited to plant, I'm actually planting all of these out in my garden. So I'm excited to get this one out there. Number four is another type of English lavender called Aromatico Blue Improved. The thing I love about this one is it's got a really deep kind of rich eggplant purple color, but it also stays the most narrow out of all the varieties we're gonna talk about today. So 14 to 20 inches tall and only 10 to 12 inches wide. So it makes it really well suited for the edges of borders, for the edges of walkways, uh, in containers. It makes for a, like a non-dominating sort of variety. I uh, Just imagine putting this next to a walkway and then walking by it and brushing the foliage or the blooms and kind of releasing that scent. Oh, I love it. The last three are all varieties of hybrid lavender or lavender, so they'll all have this super potent, strong scent, high oil content in production, long stems, usually great big blooms. This one is not at peak right now. This variety, number five, is Grosso. I think it's interesting too to note that they have a much more silver tinge to their leaves. So if I bring over an English lavender here, you can see how much more green it is when you put it up next to this one right here. Pretty interesting. This one also gets quite a bit bigger. So three and a half feet tall and wide. I mean, that's like a shrub. <laughs> it's a small shrub in the garden. A uh, very productive plant. There's another similar variety to this called Gross Blue. Uh, G-R-O-S-B-L-E-U, I believe. It's the variety that my mom and I cut when we were out at the local lavender farm absolutely beautiful, held its scent beautifully and its color beautifully. Uh, and I think everything I've ever read about that variety says it grows like two and a half to three and a half feet tall and wide. And the one out there, uh, because they do so well in our area, she said that hers gets about five feet wide. I mean, just absolutely massive. <laughs> Number six is a variety called Phenomenal. So another hybrid type lavender. It grows about two and a half to three feet tall and wide. But the things that I really like about this one, it's got the classic lavender color of bloom, but it also is very fast growing. And lavender isn't a super slow plant, but there are some varieties that will take off and establish a lot quicker. And this is one of them. The other thing that I like about it is that it's very tolerant of high humidity. So for those of you who live in the South or live in the Midwest or somewhere where the humidity is just much higher, this variety will handle it a lot better than some of the others. Same goes for our last variety, which is Sensational. So very tolerant of high humidity, but in a little bit of a smaller package. So this one has a foliage canopy that stops at about 18 inches. So this is not the variety Sensational, but I can show you on this one, this is the foliage canopy. So it tops out at about 18 inches, and then the bloom spikes can go upwards of about 30 inches, which gives it a really beautiful look, I think. But the width isn't quite as big. It's kind of 
it tops out at about two feet wide. And the flower spikes on Sensational are really dense um, and a really vibrant purple color. I just love them. And that's gonna be it, you guys, for our video on lavender today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was helpful. I'm um, just talking about some of the basics, also the different types. I find that so helpful just to dig just a little bit deeper into a plant category to figure out, you know, which one is best suited for your area. And that's why we land on for our area, you know, zone six, uh, the English and the hybrid lavenders just do so well for us and come back every year. We have done videos on lavender pruning, shearing back and things like that. Um, so we will link those down below. And if you want to learn more about how we treat our lavender here, which is a little bit different than traditional guides will tell you, you can check that out. Thank you so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one.